franktalks.com Check out the Frank Talks relationship column currently running in the Suburban Newspaper online magazine. To read more, please visit www.thesuburban.com. Listen to The Barry Morgan Show, live weekdays noon to 3 on CJAD 800 and CJAD.com. Right now, we're talking relationships, dating with uh, dating and relationship coach Frank Kermit, who is in studio, uh, sitting in for Dr. Lori this afternoon. How are you, Frank? I'm doing great, Barry. How are you? And Frank is a regular contributor to uh, Passion, by the way. Yes, I am uh, monthly, and uh, this is my 11th time on your show. Do you keep track? I'm keeping track. I'm very, I'm very proud. I'm very, I'm very delighted that you do, and I'm glad, I'm glad to have you here again, Frank. Uh, we do have a lot of stuff to talk about, including uh, something that you wrote about just the other day, went to listen to your heart. I think it was in the Suburban, right? Suburban Online Magazine. But I wanted to ask you, when it comes to dating, how old should a kid be before they start dating? And when I mean dating, I mean going out like on their own, not with their parents driving them, you know, picking them up and taking them to the movies and stuff like that. How old, in your estimation, should a kid be before they start, you know, boys, girls, before they start going out dating? I know this is not going to be a very favorable answer, but the answer is when they've demonstrated that they understand the consequences of their actions. Uh-huh. Boy, well, how how old do you have to be to get to that point? Well, it's different for everybody. Everybody uh, grows up at a different rate. Everybody matures at a different level. And the idea is... Just because they're dating doesn't mean it's okay for them to be having sex. Right. So, yes, they may be going out on their own, but just because they're going out on their own and they're forming a connection doesn't necessarily mean, well, since we're dating, we automatically have to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. I am of the opinion that keeping children ignorant is not a form of protection. Not in today's day and age. When you have the Internet that is force-feeding them images that they have to understand may not be age appropriate to their life experience. Trying to uh, shield them from it, trying to say, no, 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 stay away from it. You don't need it. Don't look at it. It's just not realistic. So if somebody wants to, and when I say somebody, I mean, if you have a teenager and wants to go out on a date, this is where parents need to really step in, talk to their kids and say, well, what are your expectations? Do you understand that there might be some things that the person that you're on a date with may want to suggest and try that you may not be comfortable with? And this is also, we have to take in the morality of the parents. Sometimes it's cultural. Sometimes it's idealized. Sometimes it's just a matter of, I want to keep my kids safe. Right. Keeping your children ignorant will not protect them. So you're better off sitting down and having an open and pardon the pun, frank discussion (laughs) with them. Fair enough. To make sure that, at the very least, they know what their own boundaries are and how to communicate those boundaries. Some people in their 20s and 30s even beyond are still waiting to have that conversation, uh, are still waiting for their parents to have that conversation with them. But I think a lot of what you said basically backs up the argument in favor of sex education in schools. 100%. 100%. A big part of my clientele are adult-aged virgins. Men and women who have never had a boyfriend, never had a girlfriend, never even been on a date in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and even 50s. Where I have to step in and say, okay, this is what your family probably didn't encourage you to know. Now it's my job to educate them on that. Yeah. And you touched also on the morality of some parents, and that's why they are not fans of sex ed, and there's religious reasons as well. But, you know, we talk about this with Lori every now and again. It's, you know, it's not good enough for her. It's not good enough for a lot of people. I don't have a problem with any particular family having a certain moral code, religious or not. Here is what I have a problem with. Keeping people ignorant, not allowing them to at least understand and to have access to information that can protect them, that's the problem. Speaking with Frank Kermit, who is a relationship and dating coach and a regular contributor to uh, to Passion with Dr. Lori Batito, which is on uh, weeknights here on CJ80 from 10 to 11. So you wrote this in the Suburban Online, When to Listen to Your Heart. A big part of the problems that I see with the client base that I'm helping out is that they use the excuse, and I, I for, forgive me for using the term excuse, I made the decision to date that person because I was listening to my heart, and it's good to listen to your heart. Well, not always, because you have to look at your track record. If you listen to your heart in something like your career, and maybe you've done very well, 
that means that, okay, you have a track record that proves you can listen to your heart when it comes to your career. But just because your heart has a pretty good idea of what to do and what not to do and gives you that intuition to steer you right in one area of your life does not mean you should listen to it all the time. And if you have a history of broken heart after broken heart after broken heart, if you have a history of making bad choices when it comes to your love life, that's the sign that listening to your heart is not a good idea. And at that point, people should... At that point, you have to start listening to your head. Eventually, eventually, you listen to your head enough, your heart will follow. It takes time. But that initial, that, that initial hump to get over, that's where people struggle. Because their, their attitude is, but I don't feel it. You're not going to feel it until you start learning to associate positive experiences and positive emotions with making decisions that are in your best interest. But when somebody, you know, falls into a, a bad relationship, they don't want to be in that situation. Nobody wants to be in that situation. But there's some repetitive behavior that you see. It's not about what a person wants. It's what they respond to. That's why you can't base it on how you feel. G give me an example of, of, you know, somebody who's had this kind of... Uh, Getting into relationships with people who are not emotionally available. Okay? They get into a relationship and the person seems like a good match. I can't help, but I feel an attachment. I feel something. And the other person isn't really interested in getting into a commitment, isn't even interested in being serious, but the person pursues and continues to pursue. They finally break up because the other person's had enough, move on. Okay, I got to date somebody new. And they base it on their feelings. Well, they're in the habit now of having feelings of attachment for someone who's not emotionally available. They have to make an intellectual decision at that point. I need to date somebody who I know is going to be a better match. Somebody who's actually interested in a commitment. But I'm not feeling it for that person. That's okay. So why do you think they feel it for somebody who doesn't have that sort of uh, capacity, maybe, or desire at least to have uh, an emotional attachment to somebody else? Uh if we get into the psychology of it, we're going right back to childhood. We form our attachment based on how we interpret to survive as a child. As children, we link our ability to survive with getting the approval of our parents. If we have parents that are emotionally distant, we are going to behave in a way that is going to get our parents' approval. Why? Because as an infant, we attach that to survival. Skip ahead 20 years. I'm now an adult. When I get the feeling that I'm around someone where I can repeat the behavior patterns that I formed as an infant with my parents, and I'm going to repeat them now, I interpret those feelings as feelings of attraction, as feelings of connectedness. And that's why we repeat those type of behavior patterns. How do you break them? You have to follow an intellectual guideline. Once you start associating positive feelings with being with new people who you aren't initially attracted to, those feelings of attraction, those feelings of attachment will come in time. This is why couples who come from arranged marriages end up making it work because they take the time to associate good feelings with one another. 219 is the time. A few more minutes with dating and relationship coach Frank Kermit. And uh, Frank, this story about uh, a boy who was uh, arrested, a 13-year-old boy, right, arrested after uh, stealing a kiss, I think I said before, from a 14-year-old girl. What, what happened here exactly? Okay, 13-year-old boy got dared by his friends to go and quote-unquote steal a kiss from a 14-year-old girl in the same grade. Uh, at some point he grabbed her and she made it clear she didn't want to be kissed, but he went ahead and kissed her anyway. It was open mouth. And um, he got in trouble with the school administration. So they're looking at a suspension, possibly expelling him. But they also called the police and had him arrested. And I think he's being charged with assault. I look at this story and on the surface, it seems like, come on, they're... <laughs> They're going too far, really. This is out of proportion. However, well, if anybody walked down the street and grabbed you and, you know, without your permission or knowledge beforehand, uh, that, that basically is assault, isn't it? That is an assault. And the issue that I have is, think about if this was your daughter. And let's reverse the genders here. What if it was your son who was jumped at, grabbed, uh, and, and he's not interested, but it, it still is forced on him? If the school does nothing... What kind of a precedent is that setting? Does that mean that this is going to become a regular occurrence? If the school does nothing, does that send a message that, hey, if something happens to you, 
don't bother coming to us because we won't do anything about it. Yeah. I have a feeling that most people know what it's like where you go to some authority figure and say, hey, this bad thing happened. If you live in an apartment building and you ever complained about a lousy neighbor who was doing something like playing the music too loud to, uh, you know, throwing cigarette butts off, uh, off the balcony. And, and or the dogs barking or, or the whatever. Barking, yeah. And the landlord does nothing. We've all experienced something close to that. You go to the authority and the authority figure does nothing. What happens next? It just keeps going on, right? Sometimes it gets worse. Yeah. Or sometimes people decide to take matters into their own hands, which leads to further altercations. Why? Because the attitude is, well, we have to wait until something more serious happens before we can act. This is an example of the school saying, Let's not wait until something more serious happens. Yeah. Let's step in now. Somebody just texted, I agree 100% with this kid being charged or at least suspended. He sexually assaulted that girl. It's time for zero tolerance if we want to make any difference in the rate of sexual assaults uh, and, and rapes as well. It's, you know, you don't want to see any kid like a 13-year-old. It sounds like at first glance, say, wow, a kid was arrested or charged for, for kissing a girl. Well, it wasn't really quite that simple. There's a difference between a couple that is already established as being together and stealing a kiss. You know, uh, w with my wife, sometimes I'll say something like, honey, you got something on your lip. She'll say what? I'll go, Mwah, me. But I'm married to her, okay? We have a long-established relationship here. This is someone who didn't want any sort of physical contact. And the fact that she was unharmed, well... She may have been unharmed in the sense that maybe there's no scratches on her, maybe there's no uh, bruises on her or welts, but do we really need to wait for it to get to that point? Yeah. Do I think he should be suspended? Yes. Do I think he should be expelled? Quite possibly. We don't know the history here. There's a lot of information that's not in the article because they're minors. I have a suspicion that there's something more going on that the media cannot report because they're minors. Perhaps, perhaps. You were talking a little bit earlier about, you know, similar values, and we were talking about dating in general, I think, and I think you mentioned, uh, like, arranged marriages. And somebody texted, so it's okay to marry someone you're not attracted to physically if you get along really well and have similar values, goals, personality, and so forth? Yes, it is, as long as everybody involved is a consenting adult. I don't believe in arranged marriages that lack consent. Also, there's a procedure that people need to follow when they are in that situation, such as you don't allow yourself to have sexual stimulation outside of that relationship. So that way you give your body time to adjust to the new person. You only get your fulfillment from that one person, and in time it becomes a reflex. It just seems to be so, you know, if you're not attracted to that person, how, I mean, I don't know, do you have stats where the success rates of these marriages, do they last? And even if they do, are they necessarily happy marriages? Actually, the stats show that whether you come from an arranged marriage or you choose on your own, the stats are that arranged marriages last about the same amount as those marriages that start from choice. In fact, in some cases, because the expectations are different going in, some arranged marriages last just a little bit more. Like, uh, there's a higher number that will actually work out. Okay. Somebody uh, at Granby texts this, Frank. I've been cheated on twice and have not left my wife. Not sure if it's because of the kids, but am I doing the right thing? Granby, first of all, my heart goes out to you because uh, I'm assuming it's your wife who's cheated on you. And the question to ask in these type of situations, and, and I want you to listen to me very carefully here. Would your life and the life of your children be better if you went through the divorce? Yeah. If you were now sharing custody, if now uh, another person was allowed to enter the life of your, at, at that point, ex-wife and your children being more at risk, children who are in the home of a single parent are 33% more likely to be assaulted by another parent coming into that situation. So are you doing the right thing? I don't know the specifics of your case. All I know is that you and your wife have had some trouble. I would look at that and say, okay, what's emotional need is not being met in that relationship that she feels the need to go out. And it may have nothing to do with you. Okay. It may have nothing to do with you. This might be something that she's dealing with. What I will tell you though, is that the fact that you are thinking about your children is a good move. At the very least, we don't know how old they are, but I'm going to assume that uh, they're probably still in school. They're not adults with their own lives. Which, Doesn't sound like it, no. 
No. So that's the question to ask. And that's, that's the advice I would give to anybody in your situation, man or woman. Are you better off going through the divorce? Would your life be better? Would life for your kids be better? And in most cases, I can tell you from my client base, okay, and, and that's that's very limited here, but it's from my client base. Anybody who, in a rage, went through the divorce, they come back afterwards and they say, big mistake, because now they have less time with their kids, less time with their families. Whatever was the issue that was going on was temporary. It could have resolved in some fashion that's beyond Well, it you. maybe could have resolved, but in a situation where they're six and two years old, so young kids, uh, uh, the, the same person just sent back this text. So young children, look, I mean, some it's it's a pretty, uh, it's you talk about being stabbed in the back when you're yeah. being cheated upon. It's so hard to regain that trust. Right, but was there anything going on? Was there a red flag right from the beginning that you may have missed where you need to decide to grow as a person. You got two kids, two and six. You know what happens to little kids that grow up in that type of environment where now you have attention being split between two families? It makes them vulnerable for predators that you don't even see in that environment. I think I always advocate if you have children, do whatever you can to make it work. And sometimes that means you have to simply eat garbage and learn to love the taste. And if there was, but you don't have to tolerate cheating over and over and no, over. You again. don't have to tolerate cheating over and over again, but you do need to figure out a way to that. Maybe things get worked out. I've also seen situations with couples where somebody went to their partner and said, look, I, I, I want to try something. I, I, my needs are not being met. And it was never brought up. It was never dealt with. So we have to be mindful that there could be something there that you can work on. But I do believe you have to try everything possible before walking away when you have young children. You'll come back for a 12th visit one day, I hope? I certainly hope so. Frank Kermit, relationship and dating coach. What's your website, Frank? Franktalks.com. Thank you so much. Great to see you again. Always a pleasure. News Talk Radio. CJAD 800. CJAD.com. Need help with love, sex, dating, and relationships? Visit FrankTalks.com Check out the Frank Talks Relationships column currently running in the Suburban Newspaper Online Magazine. To read more, please visit thesuburban.com. If you need help with your relationships, my buddy Frank, he's got some tips. Just go to franktalks.com, his advice is better than your mom's. He knows what you're going through. Frank has been there too So log on to franktalks.com franktalks.com